Hi my dearest viewers and crows and welcome to my channel Me and Places. I am Paulina and today is a special video. You see I just came back from work and the books were waiting for me. My books, they are here and I will unbox them right now in front of you. Actually I ordered them three weeks ago and usually when I order from this side it takes like three days and now it took three weeks. So these are actually long-weighted treasure. Let's see what I ordered. I remember, of course, the majority of those books, but not all of them actually. So let's see, exciting. Oh, I can see colors. Ta-da, there is something colorful there. So I just opened the box and let's see what is there. First and long-weighted. Stephen King's Institute. Uh, so about this book, uh, it came out lately, it's his last book, I believe so. Even though he's so fast in writing that in those few weeks I was waiting for these books, maybe there are some new ones that came out. I actually read some book critics reviews and they were pretty good about this one. Which is weird because as well as I know, Critics don't like Stephen King that much, at least they did not before. I would read this anyway because I'm a huge fan, no matter what. But because many critics like this, it just seems some kind of special book, so we will see. And here he is. Love this guy. Something tells me this might be the first one I will actually read from these books, but we will see, maybe not. Let's go for the next one. How much is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books. Okay, Mary Kirja. Sounds like Finnish. Eli kuinka pyydystäjä? Mä voitte ympäröivissä syvyyksissä elää jaa. Kahdeksanmetrinen. Viisisatavuotias. Something about a shark. An ice shark. Yeah, hi. I'm not sure is there such a word as ice shark in English. Anyway, this is by Morten A. Stroksnes. Have no idea how to pronounce this. I believe he's Norwegian or Icelandic. Mm, I have never read any of his books. I don't know who that actually is. I don't even remember why I bought this one. I believe I read some kind of review again and I'm not sure if it was some critic review or just some person who writes reviews and we have similar book taste but the description and the review seemed so enchanting for me that I thought to buy it and read it. Fjords, look at this. I guess things will happen somewhere in Norway in the fjords. That's awesome. have never been there by the way, even though it's so near, such a shame. one. So this one I bought because years ago I could speak some Swedish because I live in Finland and here Swedish is a second official language so everybody studies that at school but if you don't have reason to speak it you just don't. And so I didn't have reason to speak it for so many years that I forgot even simplest words. So I thought in this isolation time I should train my language skills and that's why I have two books here on Swedish language and this is the first one this is a fairy tale because I thought it's just easy to start with a fairy tale when you actually can't say anything on the language but you know it on some level and this is Mio Mi Mio Mio My Mio by Astrid Lindgren and yeah this is truly in Swedish we will see how it goes this is quite a short book. It's 100, what? 50? No, less. 138 pages. I hope this will go well. I read this as I was a child on another language. I never actually read any book on Swedish. This will be my first one. And because I already read this story when I was a child, I believe it will be easier to read it. At least that's what I'm hoping for. We will see how it goes. This was my third book. After I will actually get my language on a better level, 
I'm about to read this book. This is also in Swedish. It's not a fairy tale, it's a horror novel. And this is a very famous guy. I mean, he writes really good and well-known novels. Jon Ivy de Lindqvist. This guy wrote Let the Right One In or something like that. There is also a movie based on this novel. Look at this cover, it's quite creepy, isn't it? And I believe that this should be like short stories, if I remember correctly. Let me check. In the hall. Havsvalget, valget. How do you even read that? Speciella omständigheter. Plå, plå, plå. Yeah, like good luck with this one. After ord. I know after ord. I know what that means. But that doesn't seem like any story or significant part of the book. I'm so bad in this that even now trying to understand what this is about, I can't even tell you if this is a whole novel or it's a collection of short stories. I hope I will be able to do that after I read the fairy tale and maybe a few of my high school study books for Swedish language. We will see what will happen with this one. If I will be ready to read it this year or not. So this was Jon Ivy de Lindqvist and by the way the book is Våran hud, våran blod, våran ben. Next one. This is written by Orhan Pamuk. Istanbul. Muistot ja kaupunki. Oh this one is in Finnish. Yeah it is. This is a Turkish writer and he actually won a Nobel Prize in 2006. Yeah, I did not know that myself, I just read it from here. Let's see what is it saying. In this book there is two main characters. The city of Istanbul and a young Orhan Pamuk. Oh, this is about himself. Hmm, interesting. Memories and the city. Yeah, that sounds like something personal. Now when I go through this book there's actually a lot of pictures. Honestly, it doesn't look that interesting or something that I would grab if I saw it in a store. I don't even remember why I bought it, but I read it and then I'll tell you, right? Next one! Stories and poems by Ruben Dario. Yeah, okay, as I said to you, I want to train some of my language skills. First was Swedish and second one is Spanish. I could speak like some basic things on Spanish a few years ago and I could also read some simple texts and understand them. And again, I didn't use the language for so many years that now I cannot say anything. I can count till 10 and that's it. That's my Spanish. Yeah, just a 10. Anyway, I bought this book to train some of my language skills. I actually googled which would be a good book, which is not too hard to read on Spanish and I got a small list of them. And this is the one I picked because in the shop where I ordered, this book was in this version, which has English translation. So as you can see, one page here is in Spanish and another one is this page translated to English. So for a basic level as I have in Spanish, I believe this is a very handful book to start to train my language. This volume comprises a selection of Dario's best poems and stories. Oh, there are some poems! You know, there is something very special about Spanish poetry. They have a thing of their own, it's unexplainable, I have no idea what is the special thing I'm talking about, but I always thought when I was speaking a bit of Spanish that when I will be able to totally understand and feel through the poems, then I know the language well. So I guess I have stories for start and poems to check if I get the language or not afterwards. So that was the, was it fifth one? Sixth one. So there is three more! Cool! Ooh, was so waiting for this one. Viimeinen Atlantis by Antti Hyrynen. Uh, Antti is a guy who plays in a band which I just adore, a Finnish band called Stamina. 
I go to a lot of their gigs, I love all of their albums and as soon as I got to know that this is gonna be a science fiction book it's also based on their album Women and Atlantis which had a concept which I just loved and which kind of told me that probably it's gonna be about some apocalypse or some catastrophe or something like that. After all that I just had to read it. So I googled if libraries have it and they do, they have 50 books but there is already 350 people waiting for those books so I would have to wait so long I couldn't so I just bought it and now it's here! Oh. I believe the catastrophe, if there will be any, will have something to do with the water because see the cover and also these things here and there were some themed songs about that also. This is obviously in Finnish. Actually, I don't even know if this is translated or will be translated to any languages. Ah, oh, there's his picture. You go on the... Oh, there's two more. They will end soon. Damn it! I always get as happy as I can be getting a new book when I get her book. This is Shirley Jackson's book and I'm a huge fan of her. I'm actually making two videos about two books of her. One is The Haunting of Hill House, which is the best gothic horror story about haunted house. And another one is We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which is my favorite book of hers for now. But I have not read this one yet. This is like a collection of stories, the lottery and other stories. And the lottery was quite a famous one in her time, so... I'm really looking forward to read this one. I just love her language. It's so fine. It's so easy to read. It's so cool. And it's so atmospheric. Oh, really waiting for this. I usually spare short stories for traveling, but it's kind of obvious I won't be traveling for a long time now, so I guess I'll just read it. Oh, and here she is. An awesome, awesome woman. And the last one. This is actually in Russian this time. This is Zapiski Yunova Vracha, a young doctor's notebook. This is by Bulgakov and he is my favorite Russian writer. And I don't know how it happened, but I have never read this one. So now I will. A young doctor's notebook is a collection of short stories, short stories again, by the Russian writer Mikhail Bulgakov. The stories were inspired by Bulgakov's experiences as a newly graduated young doctor practicing in a small village hospital in Smolensk, province in revolutionary Russia. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories. But if I understand correctly, they are in one concept, like they are all about this doctor. Anyway, that was my last one. <laughs> I can't wait to dig into those books, those words and just read, read, read. Let me know what are the last books you got or read or bought. Thank you so much for watching and stay curious, right? Bye! Well, I have my phone and Google Translate, so I'll just have to keep it near for first pages. Voran hud, voran blod, voran ben. I do understand that, actually, I understand these words, but I believe there is more words than that in the book, so yeah, we will see how this goes, if I will read it this year or in a few years. <laughs> the Wandering Song and Poema del Otoño, Poem of Autumn. Ooh, I love autumn and I love poems, so this is like a bingo. I hope there is some horror stuff. It would be cool if there were some zombies also. And snakes and cakes. Cakes is not the best thing to think about on isolation. Mind my words. First one, Palaciensis Pituhov. <laughs> a towel with a cock. <laughs> I mean like a... You know, that cock. Niin kauan kun on toivoa on elämää. As long as there is hope, there is life. Ei unelma valoa vaadi, vaan rohkeutta. 
Oh, I love this one. It means the dream does not... Uh, oh, I'm such a bad translator. I'll actually get my phone. I got it, I got it, I got it. So, <laughs> really, I'm such a bad translator. Ei unelma valoa vaadiva rohkeutta. A dream does not require... A dream does not require light, it requires courage. <laughs> That's so awesome, I love that. Oh, 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 oh. Is there such a thing as book orgasm? Bookgasm. It's quite a big one. I mean, I expected a book with short stories to be smaller one. Oh, when it's her, the bigger the better. 